My name is Joanne Greenbaum, and I live in New York City, but a lot of the time now in Greenport, New York, on the North Fork. When you invited me to be in the show, I, like everyone, looked on the website to see things in the collection, and of course, it was kind of overwhelming. Um, my, the first thing I landed on was the thing that I, I stayed with the most, which was the small John Farron painting that I felt somehow related to what I did. I also loved the fact that that painting was made the year I was born, so it, it just kind of had a little bit of a, a nice serendipity to it. But also just the way that the painting was made um, just relates a lot to a lot of the work that, that I'm doing now in terms of color and form and um, just the kind of casualness of my process. So that painting was kind of the basis. And then I thought about what I had in the studio that could go with that because I wanted to show in this installation sort of everything that I do, which is painting, sculpture, drawing, making books. So somehow I really wanted to bring all of that together. And now that we've installed it, I think that we have done that. I've always been a huge Lee Bontecu fan, just the, like everything about her work. Um, and so when I found the Lee Bontecu drawing, I just wanted to include it, um, just in terms of sort of the, the kind of framing device and really the carefulness of, of the way that she drew. The other drawing, the Alfonso Osorio book, I just really related to just because I do so much of, of my own handmade books and so I mean I have hundreds of them now done in the last seven years and went, so I wanted to also show that aspect of what I do and so when I saw the the Alfonso Osorio book I just really related to that um, activity of like making a book with drawings in it and you know it's a very um, intimate type of activity it's also very meditative for me anyway so when I saw that I just related to it and wanted to show it in a vitrine with just some of my drawings and the little Ray Parker painting of course uh, mostly because of the color and also because I just know that in my own studio I have so many really small paintings that are just kind of sitting around that I kind of have this idea that the Ray Parker painting was something that was just sitting around his studio. I don't think, I have a feeling it was just kind of something that he might not have even intended to ever show. I'm a late comer to sculpture. I started, you know, maybe 20 years ago. And I didn't, I don't, certainly don't call myself a sculptor. Or maybe I call myself a painter who makes sculpture. But I took a class at Greenwich House Pottery and I just kind of fell in love with clay. And it just felt really like good physically to, to play with clay. So I got into it just because I was feeling that my paintings were very much about um, fictional structures. And so at some point I just said, well, what would happen if I just tried to make that myself? So that's kind of how it came about. And now, you know, maybe even during the pandemic, because it was so quiet and I had so much time, I ended up making a lot, a lot of clay sculpture in my studio out here. And, and I continue to do that as well. I think all my work is very playful. And I think with the sculpture, like I'm much more open to play. Like I think painting is a much more intellectual activity for me. And that sculpture is more, okay, I'm finished with painting for the day. Let me go to my little clay room and just watch a movie and make a sculpture. I mean, that's kind of how they come about. When I was going through the collection online, I had seen 
I was looking especially for sculpture and I saw this terracotta sculpture by Dorothy Frankel and who I don't know and I don't know her work but I liked it just because I was making my own sculptures out of terracotta and not glazing them the way hers aren't glazed and somehow I just thought you know I think it would be really great to just make sculpture just with the, the bare terracotta and then show them together with, with, with her piece. Alan Shields is somebody who, when I was in college, was somebody who people were talking about a lot. And I, one of my teachers um, was good friends with him. So, you know, I was just always looking at his work and I always thought, you know, because it was at the time, it was really different than a lot of the work that was was going on like it, it he worked with elements of craft which i really liked he also you know did a lot of things with fabric with dyeing and like this piece that i chose which i think is made out of like paper and string um it just i just related to to the just the idea of making things and being open to to, to adding sort of craft into, into, into one's work. I mean, something that was always kind of not allowed in the, in the art world was, you know, to add ceramics and sewing and fabric and crafts and craft materials in, into your work, like it wasn't considered proper. I mean, now I have to say, you know, my favorite store is, is Michael's, you know, where you can just go in there and there's so many ideas just walking around Michael's craft store. And, you know, and I just relate a lot to, to his, his process of, of making things. It just seems like everything that I'm looking at in my selection has this idea of the frame or like a framing device and that I, I love the idea of sort of the frame and then a collection of things that go in the frame. So, and collections of things that go in a frame doesn't have to be things, it can be marks, it can be gestures, but all of these things are kind of included in kind of a, like a framing device. And I think that pretty much sums kind of everything that, that we've put in our, our selection. I think there's been a big correction in what I've seen in the last couple years at the parish. So I think I've seen pretty much a really great range of the kind of shows. I mean, yes, I think that there is the tradition of the abstract expressionists, you know, the Pollocks, the Krasners, that, you know, kind of s somehow set the, the, the tone. But, you know, I think that that is slowly changing and that I think it seems like that the parish is making a huge effort to um, embrace more diverse populations that are that are here.